player, Viv Richards. So there it is. Uh, everybody moves on to Trent Bridge for the second of the Texas. Fine morning, count our blessings, but a delayed start. After all the rain of yesterday and last night, there was still some moisture on the extremities of the table. So they started at 11.15, and the course of the match was reduced from 55 overs to 50 a side. It looked that it would be a useful toss to win. David Gower did the trick and decided to put the West Indies into bat. Let's have a look there. Right, off we went then at 11.15. Uh, uh, Desmond Haynes and Gordon Greenwich and Bob Willis and Ian Botham bowled a very good opening spell. We're going to start the day in the seventh over. Greenwich has got to 12. It's Willis bowling to him and in the commentary box, Ray Illingworth and Richie Benno. Fine shot. Too short from Bob Willis. Slow outfield, but still it beats the fielder into the rope. Gordon Gettys plays that shot very well. A great cutter. Square cutter and back cutter. And he's gone. And Haynes had his back turned to the umpire, but knew that he must have been a really good chance of being given out there. Good delivery from Bob Willis. Haynes went straight away. First breakthrough for England, 24 on the board. Haynes goes for four. Brindle to Richardson. Oh, let that one go. To miss some shots. Wasn't uh, really all that short either. Pretty good length ball, but uh, decided to let the bat fly and it fairly raced through the offside. Uh, real West Indian stuff here. Tremendous stuff. I think he's been watching Viv Richards. There's an on back now. So just a single this time to uh, Richard Richardson. Magnificent square cut, this. That's Brindle again. And he's gone, beautifully caught and slick. Low chance to his right. So, uh, Pringle picks up his first wicket in uh, just his second over, making West Indies now 38 for two, with Greenwich gone for 20. Gordon Greenwich looking to run this one down through third man just bounces a little bit and Ian Botham picks up a nice little catch there but uh, once again uh, England have had a good start here got rid of both openers in the space of 14 overs some good uh, accurate uh, seam bowling I really gave that the kitchen sink gets underway, just uh, picked his spot for a comfortable single on the offside. Richardson has made ten. And he's gone. Well, he misjudged the pace of it, got himself in a little bit of tangle and presented a very simple catch there. So this is a, another fine start for England. It happened at Old Trafford the other day, 39 for three West Indies, and we're on in the 16th over. Well, that could be out, yes. Well, the sweet shot's brought yet another downfall, and it's the great man himself. Richard goes very comfortably caught behind there by Pringle. No problem at all. 
So a big disappointment to this vast crowd, but an immense relief to the England fielders. They think they're in with a real chance now. Richard's gone for only uh, three runs. Combs and Lloyd, two players who many times in the past have uh, pulled the West Indies out of trouble. And there a slip, he would have gone. Just coming in without a slip seems a fatal mistake. And that definitely turned. A little bit wide, but I mean, there's no question about it turning. And uh, it's a great shame that they weren't attacking a little more. Gone for that one, all right. Used his feet down the pitch, let go, mighty straight six. So, way to bring up the 50, thought uh, Clive Lloyd. And a marvellous shot, this by Clive Lloyd. Down the wicket and high over mid off. Fine strike. That placement again, with the bat coming through straight, but the bat face angled to such a degree that even straightforward defensive stroke is going past square leg or through mid wicket. You can see this as Gomes comes forward here, and his bat's really at 45 degrees. But the leading edge is almost facing the ball, and the ball's got to go on the long side. What a morning Pringle has had. At lunch, he'd taken two for 13 from six overs. He's picked up his third wicket now. And West Indies in terrible trouble at 75 for five. Lloyd has uh, got the job now of not only holding together the West Indian innings, but also carrying the attack to the English bowlers. He's got onto that, and he's hit it magnificently, away over deep square leg for six. Against the spin, but there's immense strength there from Clive Lloyd. And this is a tremendous shot because it really is the biggest boundary on the ground. He's gone for the sweep there and uh, it's not that easy to hit a big six off a sweep and that must have carried oh, 80 to 90 yards. That's a very big hit indeed. And Miller again to Lloyd. A short. Uh, comfortable run there. In fact, it's another big six. Don Osler just having a look. Miller fatally dropping that almost halfway down. Swung away with consummate ease by uh, Big Clive Lloyd. So the 100 goes up, 100 now for five. So this is Neil Foster of Essex coming down from the Radcliffe Road end. It's a good looking shot in the air, but perfectly safe. Typical West Indian shot there, a lot of right hand into it, but uh, races away through mid wicket for four. Two batsmen aware now. They've got to try and push the runs along. If we're going to reach anything like a formidable total. A firmly clipped off drive to bring the uh, life. Clive Lloyd, yet another 50. Been rattling the 50s and 100s off in uh, every form of cricket ever since he first appeared for the West Indies. 50 out of a total of 120 for five, coming up in the 38th over. Oh yes, good shot. No spin in that, ball coming straight on. Gave himself room, cracked it through the offside. This outfield has been pretty slow. And uh, Mike Gatting doing well out there.
got into work, saved a single, only took three for it. He's gone for the big cloud, it's a long way in the air, is he going to get it? Yes, beautifully caught, and uh, Clive Lloyd goes, and that's a fairly critical blow. Oh, what a match Derek Pringle's having, three good wickets, that's a second catch he's taken, and a fine catch too, with a long way to go for it. Clive Lloyd, chance in his arm, just once too often. It's a 1.28 for six. And uh, Malcolm Marshall, the new batsman. Fortunate runs there for Marshall. Fine delivery from uh, Botham, a genuine outswinger. Yes, a little bit of swing there for Ian Botham. And a thick outside edge just wide of David Bearstow. Geoffrey Dujon, the West Indies keeper facing. Uh, it's a good in between your Griff, who's got to be run out. So uh, that's another very useful wicket for England to pick up. And an intelligent uh, piece of fielding there too by Dusty Miller. Saw that uh, Dujon was hopelessly out of his crease, wasn't chancing the throw, just ran in and disturbed the bears. So seven men out, 148 on the board and the 43rd over. to squeeze another single out of it. I don't know, Tom, what the odds are on another run out. Must be an even money bet almost. And how about that? Bob thought that was out, and he is out, in fact. But that is exactly in the way I anticipated. I thought there might be a run out here before long. Everybody watching the umpire at this end, Don Osley, for the result of the LBW shout. And in the end, it was Harold Bird who put his finger up as he was run out at the far end. Well, it's all action here. And very good shout for LBW. Bob Willis hasn't got much doubt, but Bairstow quickly onto it and a direct hit. And Malcolm Marshall run out. Both of them now to hold him. And he's bowling. Ideal delivery for a late order batsman right up there in the block hole. Slick through Holding's defence. And he goes without troubling the scores. 161 now for nine. And a wicket for Ian Botham. Oh, that must be very close. Indeed it is. In the end of the innings. And well bowled, Bob Willis. Fine performance to close off the West Indians here at 179 finished up with 9.3 overs no maiden two for 26 an excellent effort from him in fact all the england bowlers did very well today and the feeling was again quite brilliant impressive out cricket then from england there may have been a twinge or two of anxiety during the uh, lloyd dujon stand but the threat from the west indies captain was overcome and you'll notice that the West Indies uh, didn't use up their allotment of 50 overs, one and a half overs short. England bowlers did pretty well. Excellent figures for Willis, two for 26. Pringle, three for 21. Miller, two very valuable wickets. Those of Richards and Lloyd. And Foster, no justice, he bowled pretty well. So the England task, and it seemed within their compass, although we suspected they might have to work pretty hard for it, 3.60 and over. And the innings began with a quite magnificent uh, opening assault, the first over that Joel Garner bowled to Graham Powell. He passed his bat down the offside four times. No luck for Joel Garner at all. Let's see what happened in the second over. Second ball, it's holding, bowling to the other left-hander, Andy Lloyd. England off the mark. Nice stroke from Andy Lloyd. Four runs behind square off Michael Holding. After that first over, that'll be a great relief to both these batsmen. It's 
good shot. There was some movement off the seam there for holding, but Fowler covered it very well. Punched it away past point. 16 on the board now for England. It's uh, quite extraordinary that anyone on this pitch can get a ball to behave like that because it, the, ball, the ball has been coming off in the most placid fashion all day. Shot. Nice strike. Andy Lloyd. Warwickshire punching that away off the back foot and picking up three runs. Eldin Baptiste. He's got it through this time. This outfield uh, quite slow on Trent Bridge standards after the uh, heavy rain yesterday. But they've run well between the wickets. And uh, adding three, bringing up the open stand of 50. And he's gone for the big slog, and he's pretty, pretty well. Just about five or six yards inside the ropes. Nobody back there on that long on boundary. And that's brought the crowd to life. So a level four and over. Oh, in trouble if he hits. Oh, dear, dear, dear. No other West Indian had got near the wicket, of course. He had to hit to make sure the man was out. He was uh, pretty well off target with the throw. It's Fowler to face. And he's bowling. So the final breakthrough there made by... Uh, Eldine Baptiste, Fowler goes for 25 after a fine opening stand of uh, 75. Sort of basis that England needed if they were going to reach this target. Fairly modest one of 180, and the two left handers have done well. Good shot. Beautifully picked up by Gar. A bit of home support in um, the popular corner. Back. Dropped him. Great effort. I think we'll find in the replay that Richards was just about horizontal there, making a marvellous attempt to take that catch. Tremendous effort this by Viv Richards. Look at that. Six from that over, and that's just what England need. They're past the 100 mark now, 103 for one. And he's gone. The breakthrough. Baptiste has picked up two wickets now. Andy Lloyd, the man to go, one short of his half century. Caught by Dujon, Baptiste for 49. And Gower is on 13, 103 for two. pick up three if they're quick enough on Garner's uh, perhaps little dicky arm as it is a bowling thing from Joel Garner One thirty for two side screens adjusted and Gomes now from the Radcliffe Road end to bowl to David Gow Desmond Haynes and he's put it down that was, well, it was pretty well a straightforward chance, and Desmond knows it, I'm afraid. They've taken a single, and that's a real break for England. And uh, not such good cricket from the West Indies. Alan Lamb now to take strike. Side screen goes across, Desmond Haynes. 
Bud Radley very unhappy. And he's bowling. Well, that, that really was an unnecessary stroke from Alan Lamb. They were going along very well, Gower and Lamb. And now they've gone to 131 for three with Lamb bowled by Gomes. Great breakthrough for him after that drop chance. Gower facing on 34. He's given that the big heave ho over the top of uh, Joel Garner. So Gower taking uh, a few chances now. A great appeal there from uh, Marshall, but Osley having nothing at all to do with it. And he's given in this time. Shouted uh, the previous ball turned down, but that one certainly pitched on. And David Gower goes for 36 to make England 145. Now for four. And a wicket there for Malcolm Marshall. Doesn't look all that happy about it, but the replay will give us a better idea. Yes, it looks fairly straight, is that? So big Joel Garner back to bowl to Gatting. And carrying on as he began with his uh, magnificent early spell of five overs. And again, the first ball, that little bit of extra bounce again that he gets that nobody else gets. And there you are, over the top of the bat. goes and one can't honestly say it was unexpected over the course of the last over or two so the first wicket for Joel Garner must say pretty well deserved well, without much luck but, uh, in the end it levelled up disposing of Gatting Slash at that one. He's got uh, a three-quarter connection. And he's running like a hare, he's David Best. He's already made two, he's coming back for the three. And three, again, very vital runs. And both of them have a chance to face now. He's uh, launched into that one. That's a great shot and a great shot for England. Four runs. That uh, relieves the pressure a good deal. Brings the uh, difference now down to single figures on in nine wanted. All into both of them. Down the wicket, he's got that many a mile in the air. He's going to be caught though. Yes, safely pouched. Third man of all places. Larry Gomes taking the catch. And you don't see that uh, sort of dismissal too often. Many a mile up in the air. Shows you the strength of both in the flat court the middle of the bat. It would have gone over the Radcliffe Road. Still carried all the way down to the third man boundary, but both of them's out for 15. Well, hardly a soul has left this uh, Trent Bridge ground. Funny old guy in the game of cricket. Anything uh, could still happen, of course, with these two bowlers in action. But uh, surely if England can't win this, they'd never win one of these. Drop the bat on that and hurry it through. Great throw. Only one stump to aim at there. Garner to Miller. And again, they've run very well. And again, that shy is right on target. And for the second time, Jeff Miller's only just scrambled home. Well, it's all happening out there. Tremendous cricket, tremendous throw-in. Again, it must have been very tight indeed. 
Jeff Miller just pushes it there on the offside and they come running again, takes aim, throws and very, very, very tight. Holding the best. And he's bowled him. Oh, but he's stumped flat and holding strikes again on 77 for seven, still three wanted. And uh, West Indies, as is their want, fighting every inch of the way. No change in the field, holding to Pringle. So no ball. Oh, that's handy. Oh, that's handy. Bird making sure everybody on the ground seen it and heard it. <laughs> Dickie there getting the biggest cheer of the day for that no ball. If he does it again, I think he'll be the hero of the day and get man of the match, probably. That could be it. Clip through mid wicket. Bim's not bothering. They said it can go for four. They must run the two. And that's it. So as this uh, crowd invade the pitch here. England getting home by a margin of three wickets to level off a score at one apiece in this Texaco trophy. England with 13 balls to spare. A good box office finish, no doubt, but I must say that after that opening stand of 75, England made a pretty good meal of it. Uh, on a day when the West Indies out cricket, uh, not a lot went right for them, particularly Joel Garner. Just look at Joel Garner's figures. They're doing no justice whatsoever. One for 22 off nine overs. All the quicks had very respectable figures. So, after it was all over, amidst the joy of an England victory, Tony Lewis, adjudicating the man of the match, gave the award to Derek Pringle, the Essex all-rounder. Three good wickets, two catches, and moreover, he made the winning hit. Well, and one to play in this Texaco series. Victor